Welcome to your favorite TV destination when it comes to fashion, business and uh, the industry at large. And Success Cameras, welcome to Brands and Fashion. Just tuning in, yes, this is Brands and Fashion, your one stop for all things fashion and all things, you know, fashion brands. Now, we're moving straight into our trends for today. Our trend is floral prints. I happen to be spotting one today. Uh -uh. <laughs> so floral prints are what I like to tag fresh and feel good pieces. So why don't we go and uh, get a feel of them? Floral prints, also known as florals, are patterns and designs that have flowers on them. Over the years, they have become a trendy piece of clothing, perfect for vacations, pool parties and backyard hangouts. Floral styles have evolved from just the tropics. They now include Native American, African and English floral prints. These prints have been long associated with women's wear. Many people think of florals as a feminine print, but that is not how it is. The fresh print looks great on men as well. Like the color pink, floral prints are also a territory that can be tough to visit for men. But that by no means says that you cannot try them. A few rules for wearing floral prints are Don't wear two different floral prints together. Even if the contrast seems lovely, don't. The rest of your clothing items should be plain when you are wearing a floral printed piece. Floral prints don't suit all occasions. Be mindful about where you intend to wear one to. On buying and styling a floral piece, consider the following tips. Fabric choice, size and fit, prints and patterns. It can be feminine, but it can also be in your face some of the time. I really love floral prints. And now to where we get first-hand professional tips on the show. Joining me in the studio to talk about starting a ready-to-wear brand is the CEO of Inspire by DY, Larry Adewumbi. Welcome, madam. Thank you, success. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. I'm spotting a floral print and it happens to be our trend for today. How amazing wow. is that? <laughs> That's quite amazing. I should talk about this dress. It, it's a ready-to-wear piece, obviously, and it looks good. As in, I don't even know how people pick this material, how people like you pick these materials and they just, they just work. And then the style as well. Um, actually, is um, th that's what you call the job of the designer, anyway. So sometimes you, um, so there are two ways to design. So you're either designing from uh, a sketch to a pattern, or you are designing from the fabric to a sketch. So, but most times I do fabrics to design. So I get fabrics and then you I, yeah, I then I think about what would work well for the Sweet, fabric. sweet, fantastic. So let's just go straight into um, talking about. Uh, this ready-to-wear pieces. So, first off, from a professional angle, what are ready-to-wear pieces? Okay, just like the name is ready-to-wear, it means that these are pieces that you can readily pick up from the store or from the shop, the boutiques close to you, and then you can easily put them on. So you are running for an event or you're running late, you can easily walk up to a store and say, oh, can I have so-so in my size? And then you pick them and you go. In That's my size, keyword, yeah, exactly. keyword. Okay. So uh, let's do a rundown, sort of, of what these this um, ready to wear a ready to wear brand entails in full. Wow, that's actually is a full fledged. <laughs> so if you're going into a ready to wear, so I remember the other day someone um, sent me a DM on Instagram and she was like, "Oh, the ma, I'm trying to get into a ready to wear business and I would really appreciate some tips." I'm like, really. <laughs> I've just started myself but then really it takes a lot because number one is you need to so even if you're doing ready to wear there are lots of um, um, elements to it there are lots of categories even to ready to wear so you could be doing 
um, native, you could be doing casual wears, you could be doing even ready to wear dinner wears. Like you, you need to pick a niche for yourself. You need to know exactly what you love to do, what you want to see people wear that would give you joy. For Inspired by DY, uh, our niche is actually for casual wears. We are not into the dinner wear or ashwebi or anything. Mm. It's just strictly casual wears. Everything casual, your maxis, your uh, two-piece set, trouser set, short set, just name it. So far it's casual, that's that's where we are. So you need, first off, you need to know your niche, you need to know where you want to go into and then you need to now look at the category of people you want to um, cater, cater for. To, yeah. So are you looking to cater to the older women or you're looking to capture the younger guys or you want to stay somewhere in between or you want to Maybe cater for everybody. So because so far you break down your niche, it actually brings down your broad. So it's not like you're just there for everybody because once you are for everybody, you're actually for nobody. <laughs> but True. then so if your niche your niche trims you down, then your audience category, your target market category also um, reduces the broad. And then um, another thing is you now need to look at the your costing. So are you going to into luxury or you mm. want to be in the affordable range? So there are a lot of other factors that you need to consider actually. Okay, okay. So moving straight up, at what point, say I want to start a ready-to-wear brand, should I draft my business plan? I would say from the point that you, are, that you actually thought of starting the business, um, it might not be the professional business plan like in quotes, like you need to have like your paper, the pen, signed, sealed. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be you get a notebook just look at okay first okay what who do i need to cater to what is the name of my brand what does my brand stand for what is my brand equity what is my brand personality all of those things you just need to um, outline them because they will help you anyways in number one like you just said now we talked about floral prints so sourcing for your fabrics those things actually helps you to know what kind of like the, the the guys i buy my fabrics from they already know the guy will say oh, i already know what you want you know you don't i know you don't buy this particular kind of fabric it's not all the fabrics that i go for right because i already know your niche my niche i know what my audience will love i know what i even love to work on you get so i feel like from the point where you actually thought of starting the business you should have a plan how do you know what to produce because you mentioned that um you're going to you first of all get your fabrics and then you decide what to produce now like this very beautiful style which i'm very sure you made your <laughs> style <laughs> obviously she made style, yeah. so um this dress say you see the fabrics like how do you know what styles to produce how do you select like the general selection process let's say the, from the fabric to the selection process to the um styles the styles are very important because it's a very huge risk one person like that is you in this case you are bringing out a style for example this one and you are making it in different sizes and quantity and then putting it out there for and hoping someone loves it like how do you even start to like break that down hmm. <laughs> like i said um so it's two ways sometimes we do so if we're trying to like plan uh, maybe a new selection for instance we go from sketching so we sketch our designs so that way from sketching the designs you already know that okay maybe because it will comes with patterns and maybe colors as well and that's fashion illustration so it comes with the patterns and colors so that way you can easily go to the market and say oh okay let me look for something along the line of this design that i've created but then the other times you just go to the market you see beautiful fabrics like i said because you already know the niche that you belong to so you buy all these fabrics and then you come back and say okay so this would be good for maybe a skirt and a blouse maybe this would be good for short sets maybe this would be good for this particular style and then you do the design but trust me it's not every <laughs> design that you actually create for instance um so most times i've created designs that i i thought that oh this would be great by the time it comes out and then in the process maybe there's a mistake and then i just turn it into something else and then it is that mistake that people actually love and then the one that you think oh wow i've done this great job and then people are just like no a or b no 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 i'll go for this and that is actually the mistake do you understand so it's not really so most times we create the designs because we feel like okay yeah 
you've considered a lot of the fashion rules, the patterns and all of that. But then what people will love is what they really will love. Tell. Exactly. <laughs> How is the price affected, whether from the customer's angle and from your angle? Okay, so first off, if you're doing a custom made, obviously you'll be more expensive because I'm, I'm going to have to calculate all my labor, my resources and everything on one Just outfit one that out. you are making. Mm. So for instance, I could be selling this dress ready to wear maybe like 12,000 Naira. And then even if you bring your fabric to me to make the same dress, I could charge you 15,000 Naira mm -hmm. because it's not the same cost. This one I'm going to be mass producing. Yeah, for instance, yeah. I'm cutting my fabric in, so I know that it's not going to waste. So if I'm cutting sleeves, I'm probably cutting like 20 sleeves at the same time, mm -hmm. and I'm, I know how to manage the fabric. If the tailor is working, they already know that they're working on this particular style at this point in time. So the process is a lot more smoother than if, okay, today somebody comes, okay, I want to make this custom made. First, I have to think about the design, I have mm -hmm. to think about um, the underlining, I have to think about the thread, the color, all of this, and then power and all of that. So all of those things will affect the cause that I'm going to, that would, um, that would be incurred for that particular outfit. But obviously, for ready to wear, it's a lot cheaper because we build the cost on the overall production. The overall cost of, of pro production, mass producing. Yes. Ah, I have uh, a production to make, say, uh, there's a fabric i come to meet you to mass produce for me do you do that as well yeah we do that we do um garment production so that's um it's called manufacturing so we do that for um so other designers who don't have the capacity or the capability to sew in large quantities because yes we have a number of tailors who are able to accommodate all of that especially for people abroad there are a lot of um designers abroad or retailers abroad who want to sell ready-to-wear pieces mm -hmm. and then of course they cannot um, afford to get tailors over there to sell for them so they order from us some some people are like they order from our own ready-to-wear designs and other people would just say okay so these are my designs Please you design so we just charge them for our own services and then it's their brand we don't so even exhibit it on our page straight up can you own a ready-to-wear brand without knowing how to sew? Of course you can. Fantastic. So Definitely. So far you're creative. So far you have ideas of um, the kind of designs you want to make. So you get a fashion illustrator. You get you hire a garment factory with good tailors. You do your branding and then you do your advertising and you sell. You can. Speaking of which, <laughs> advertising, because you cannot wear the clothes and just sit in the store or no, you can't. Is, <laughs> the dresses and then it will sell. People no. will come and meet you. You have to of go course. And, like meet them, put yourself out there. That's so actually you, the core. How does one as a ready to wear brand say I finished produ producing and everything and I want to like put myself out there from your own perspective because you've been there. <laughs> tell us, please. I think that's actually the most challenging part of this whole process especially for a starter so for someone like me <laughs> at some point i was the designer i was partly the tailor mm. i was the <laughs> i was the uh, the one in charge of quality control and then you have to be the one to still model leads and then you have to be the one to still run adverts and all of that mm. so but then i feel like it's easier if you have the resources if you get tailors, it makes, it takes, or you need to just be able to delegate. So it takes some responsibilities off you mm -hmm. so that you're able to do all this. Because at the end of the day, it is the business that is important. But then if all you want to do is just to sew and just show people, because there are people who just love to sew and just show people. But if you're in the business, then you need to be able to delegate other parts of the business to other people so that you can focus on the business itself, it which, is the the advertising, advertising. Mm -hmm. which is the advertising, which is the advertising. So it's important that you um, draw up a plan that puts your business out there, but then also work on your back end stuff. So that by the time you get people coming to buy your stuff, when they see it, they'll be able to tell the other person oh, and I tell know. the other person and tell the other person, which is what my brand is actually about. I actually pride more in that than any other thing.
fantastic thank you so much you have you have spilled the bean you have in fact there, i don't have any more questions i feel google can do the rest for you but then you cannot get this kind of advice spot on advice on google that's the reason you should be watching the show have you checked out the other episodes make sure you do so we are moving on to the next segment which is our celebrity style inspiration on this episode we have uh denola gray <laughs> I know she knows him. Who does not know Denola Gray? Oh, well, so, so he um, born in Lagos, Nigeria, on 13th August 1990. Adenola Adepetun, popularly known as Denola Gray, is a fashion consultant actor, writer, and multimedia personality. He had his primary school and secondary education in Green, Green Springs Schools, Lagos, spent a year at uh, Oxbridge Tutorial College, and then went on to bag a bachelor's degree in media business from Baylor University, majoring on analysis and of media and fashion market. That's a very fancy course. Do we have that in Nigeria? I'm not sure we do. <laughs> well, I pray we get there someday because that's a very broad um, course course actually study and it wow it, it, it kind of prepares you for the work, ma it does. work uh, it does. labor market it rather. Does. I was actually going to say that like listening to this you could see why his style stands out yes. because there's is is a different thing when you have the talent and then when you have education to back, back up your up. talents you, you definitely definitely you're going to soar I, I think yeah that that must have actually contributed to the the, way he the rawness and then the the authenticity. the authenticity of of his of his so Denola started his career in fashion at age 18. In 20, in 2008, rather, he interned at CMC. In 2010, he began working for Fruition Image Consulting and also worked as an intern in Walter Baker as a supervisor of media activity of the company in the same year. Uh, in 2012, he worked with PRC Consulting and he became a show host on uh, Ebony Live TV, acted alongside RMD and uh, Eku Edewa in the TV series Castle and Castle amongst other things. He uh, initially wrote style tips for men with Bella Ninja and subsequently he recorded style tips on camera for segments on Ebony Live. Now he is at Orange Culture and is one of the brand ambassador for LFDW which is Lagos Fashion and Design Week. Uh, it's not is not easy. One thing that stands out for me though is the way he plays with colors. Colors Fabrics, fabrics, patterns. He's just so bold. I wish I could be that bold. Well, I, I feel like, like I said again, his um, educational background is exposure. Yeah, I think exposure. because something about fashion is you need to, if you're well traveled, if you're well knowledgeable about places and people, there's no how it's not going to affect your fashion sense. Mm. One of the, one of the, so in like the studies of fashion, one of the core elements of um, um, getting fashion inspiration is actually traveling and meeting people, going to places. And I feel like all, all those have actually contributed to him. Yeah. I feel like his, 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 style, his style is Out amazing. I still world. saw one of um, his videos yesterday. I think last night I, I watched one of his videos that and I'm challenge. like, Oh my god. Yeah, so you see, she's watching what I'm watching. It means we're on the same page. So it's if you've actually, not watched actually, it, check it out. Actually, it was great. And then the and then the swag that he that he has you it you, now. <laughs> you are born with it. You don't learn it. So maybe maybe school helped him, but like the swag is just that's just it. So if you have the talents and then you have the exposure. The sky is your limit. Oh. The sky is your starting, starting point, point, actually. It's your starting point. Thank you so much. So we're going to take a quick breather here. When we come back, we are going to find out who our brand highlight for this week is. Don't go anywhere. Joining the show, you have missed 
out on quite a lot but we still have you know little something for you going forward so next is our brand's highlight so taking the spotlight on our brand's highlight today is inspired by dy and i'm beyond pleased to have the ceo here in person thank you once again for being here Lauren. thank you so much for having me <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go straight in and talk about inspired by dy i told you earlier on that i had been there i visited the physical store and it is amazing so let's just start with the name what inspired that amazing <laughs> name <laughs> okay um so basically the name was actually inspired by I don't even know how to explain this. So the initials, so people actually always ask me, so this what is the Y in why? your in your name. So what's your name actually? So when I say my name is Larry and I, they're wondering okay, D Y Larry. <laughs> the D Y is actually initials of two people actually inspired me to work on my dream. Oh. So and then I just thought about the name for the brand and that day I'm just like okay this thing is actually inspired by this guy. So inspired by these people okay. <laughs> so that's just the yeah, that's yeah, just the, the and i think there's the first this is actually the first time i'm actually explaining it to people yeah, you see, and <laughs> just to be fair i've heard lots, lots of people i've asked this question several times i want inspired the name of your brand yeah. and then they tell me stuff yada yada but this i'm not going to lie it's very <laughs> i'm inspired like i wouldn't have thought that it came from that amazing yeah. so how long did it take you to get your brand to this point hmm it's been quite a journey but i would say that um from the point where i started building the brand itself um i think that should be about three years now we started off in 2018 like building the brand itself so i would say it's been three years now it's been three years, but seriously, two years from 2019. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. We really focus on challenges a lot. So let's hear it. The challenge for, <laughs> for Inspired by DY, I'm trying to, I think first and foremost, the challenge that, I've, uh, that we faced over the years will be, I think power is like the major challenge we have, you know, oh. resources, amenities, power has always been a challenge. The electricity is not stable and then you have to probably rely on for and then there's no how we can even process anything without power mm. our machines have to use power we have to iron we have to do this we have to so power is like the major challenge so what's the most fulfilling thing about owning um inspired by dy uh, in recent times is um having our physical store Ooh, okay it's been it's been a, a smooth sail since then. It's been from one um, achievement to the other since we since we got the physical store. It was we launched during the pandemic. It was, wow! During it was, the pandemic, it was a miracle that <laughs> I do not even know how it happened. It was in September 2020. That was when we opened our physical store. Wow. When people thought that nothing, <laughs> nothing was <could> happening, <laughs> but then that was when we opened our first physical store. But then since then, I would say it has been. We've been moving, we've been moving. The growth has been, it's been Check amazing. <laughs> I would not say exponential yet, but then it's we been. We have to celebrate the small wins. We should, we should the actually. It's matter. been, <laughs> so it's been really fantastic. What should we expect from Inspired by DY in the nearest future? Hmm. In the nearest future, we want to be able to have more outlets. Mm -hmm. Um maybe one more in lagos and then maybe spread to oh, other awesome. parts of the country for now um other parts of the country at least the the high business areas in the country fantastic we want to be able to have outlets at this one around everywhere mm -hmm. so that sounds like a plan and uh i know you'll do it because she's come this far so we've been speaking to the ceo of inspired by dy larry at me yes inspired by dy happened to be ours brand highlight for today moving on to our final segment we have our fashion talent from designers to illustrators and models my fashion talent for today is 
Claire Idera Nani. Claire is a creative entrepreneur who is dedicated to the development of arts and design in Africa. Now she has a background in architecture, creative practice and fashion design and this is evident in her unique signature. So um, now the question is this something about illustration you mentioned it during our conversation so do you do illustrations as well i do wow fantastic i do but not often because it's not it's not my core mm. so it's not something i want to uh, spend so much time on so most times when i want to create new collections i would probably just hire a fashion Someone illustrator like yeah exactly because i am one for just know what you want to do you don't have to do everybody's job because you will, at the end of the day, you just wear I yourself out. I think that's out. a very, that's a very um, significant point to keep hammering on. You can't do everything There are people who have majored in fashion illustration, so let them also sell their markets. And then Fantastic. focus on your own designing. So I give you my idea and then you, you bring it to it. Yeah. And now Claire is in a field that is not very, uh, let's say pronounced. It's not out there, especially in this part of the world, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's not out there. It's only amongst, uh, say, ready-to-wear brands, yeah. the people that are really doing fashion, not just tailors now, people that are really doing fashion. And now Claire has collaborated with big names such as Hugo Boss, Lisa Folawiyo, um, Zashadu, and Rele Gallery. So aside from fashion illustration, she's a very good uh, designer. Like, she draws really well. And with, with her background in architecture... architecture what else can we say? I, you can't expect less. You have been fantastic on the show today. Thank you. You have been amazing too. You Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I enjoyed it. I learned. I hope you learned as well. I hope you had a good time too. Of course I did. Thank you so much. So how do we reach uh, Inspired by DY or Larry Adewumi? Just in case we, you know, we need to do one or two things. Please bring in the business. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for that. Okay, so um, you can reach Inspired by DY on Instagram. What's um, Inspired by DY? Inspired by DY. And then we're also on WhatsApp on 090 800 44303. 090 44303 so you can call or whatsapp on that number this number showing on your screen exactly so uh this is where we draw the curtain on today's episode i know you learned go back and read that exercise book if you just if you jot it stuff down you know i'll do the same okay i promise <laughs> so make sure to follow ibrand tv on all social media platforms facebook instagram we are on youtube live on youtube make sure to stream our breakfast show every day by 9 9 a.m. Don't miss it. You will love it. And so until I come your way next time, my name is Success Kevinist. Goodbye. iBrand TV. Business first.